Welcome back, folks, to more Let's Play Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist in the last episode. Um, let's not talk about that. That took way too long. Right, I'm going to try a different tactic uh, in this video and and videos after this. Is I'm going to buy a pack first. Uh, so let's go. Let's go for the guy that kicked my ass all that time. It's Jack Atlas, mate. So essentially, what I'm going to do is. We're gonna buy a we're gonna buy a Jack Atlas pack. I mean, I got like so much dual points. I can buy so many. Uh, but really, what I get in the pack, like if I get a good pack, then I know I'm gonna have a good day for this. It's like card pack fortune telling. I know I'm gonna have a good video. If it's a crap one, I know I'm gonna have a bad one. But also, I may get a bad pack, but then may have a good run. Who knows? Jack Atlas, I'm purchasing you for four hundred. You cheap bastard. What are we gonna get here? Okay. Well, we got a Mortal of the Thunder. That's not the best, to be honest. Jeez. Gash the Dust Lord. What a name. Ah. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool for Synchro Monsters. Okay. Um. That's alright, we also, we got like a Mortal of Thunder, we got White Horned Dragon, we got Gash the Dust Lord, we got Crimson Sentry, I remember Crimson Sentry just vaguely, and we got Rayquaza. Great, lovely. Right, anyway, so I guess that pack was, I don't know, I saw like possibly two cards in there that I knew. I'm going to say that pack was, eh, so this is probably going to go terribly for me. Digging deeper, let's go. Reporter Carly Carmine was on the trail to find out what exactly the Crimson Dragon was. Well, obviously, it's something to move the plot along. Everyone knows that, Carly. It's not really a scoop, you know. Her search led her to sneak into the Arcadian Movement headquarters, where she came face to face with Saya. These files prove Arcadian Movement isn't in as innocent as they claim to be. Well, well, little mouse. You should be more careful. You shouldn't go scampering where there could be traps. Like mouse traps, which don't usually work. But here's some cheese for you. Wonder actually, do, do like in mouse traps where, is there possibly that some mice, due to natural selection, get smart to mouse traps? They're like, I've seen one of those, I ain't going anywhere near that. I wonder, because if not, they're dumb creatures. Like, seriously, they look at something and go, hmm, this has killed so many of my friends. Ooh, cheese. I sure hope not. Now that you've seen what I've seen, I can't let you leave. Great kidnap plot. It's not say as first either, to be honest. But in the interest of good sports, allow me to at least give you a fighting chance. You could try to run or you can duel me. What do you say? Bring it on. You should have tried to run. So... Oh, mouse. Is that my mouse? Oh no, my mouse! That's gonna be in the comments. Oh my god, why is the first three minutes of this video he's got his mouse on screen? I forgot to take it off. Apologies. Look at this lovely tip, folks. Uh, future me, can we uh, zoom in on that? Zoom in some more! Zoom in more! Use Psy Station to make so many higher level synchro monsters easier. Lovely. What a great, useful tip, by the way. I would just like to say, that is a really useful tip. And I'm not even being sarcastic. I am not being sarcastic whatsoever. That's a really useful tip. Because do you know what? Do you know what Carly's got? Carly's got a spell card, which essentially negates normal summoning. You know, you know, you, you sort of kind of, sort of, kind of can't do that. Making it pointless! Pointless bloody card! It's awful! Right, Telekinetic Shocker, we're playing that first. It's a pretty decent card to use. Teleport as well. And just in case you play something bollocks, I'm activating telepathic power. Right, let me guess. First turn, terraforming future visions, or just straight into future visions. It's gonna be one of those two. Fortune Lady Wind. Okay. There goes Teleport. Lovely. That's your turn! It's an interesting turn. It's also a shit turn. So, there's Psy Station. Okay, um... Might be able to actually make use of this for a change. So I can get level 7 on the field right now. So I can get Life Trancer. Which is alright. If 
but I kind of want Hyper Psychic Blaster. Who's a pretty badass, pretty badass monster. Okay, let's let's summon Doctor Cranium in defense mode. Let's hold off. Let's let's let's, let's hold off on the uh, on the damage train here. I may have a better plan here. I may have a better plan. I probably should have summoned Doctor Cranium, but then again, that would have been pointless. What do you got? Another Fortune Lady Wind. Okay. You're getting rid of Psy Station. Yep. So, Carly's deck is the Fortune Ladies, which gain attack and defense in comparison to the level, which is quite interesting, I guess. Um, okay, so... Special summon one. Okay, I think I can get the Blaster on the field this turn. I think I can get the Blaster on the field. Okay, so that'll be level... Yeah, Psybeast. Psybeast will work, because I've got level 4, level 1. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Okay, I summon Psybeast. Screw your face. And then I flip the Doctor! Cranium! Cranium! And Creebons! Right, good start to the turn! Right, um, so... Really, actually, this is the better turn? But anyway, yeah, so Carly's deck is a Fortune Lady deck. Uh, they gain life point, they gain attack and defense every turn because the level goes up by one every turn. Um, which is quite a nasty ability. They've also got little extra abilities. Uh, the worst one's probably Fortune Lady Earth because it's just nasty. It's just a dangerous card altogether. Right, let's Synchro Summon. I could Synchro Summon anything here. I could Synchro, synchro Summon, uh, should I actually Synchro Summon... Hang on, what do we got? So I could summon level. I could summon anything. <laughs> Hyper Psychic Blaster. I really want to use this thing. I'm using this thing. Right, level two, level two, level four, level one. Here we go. It is the best card in Sayer's deck. Hyper Psychic Blaster. There it is. All right, so if this card attacks a defensive position monster, inflict piercing damage to your opponent. At the end of the damage step of this card, attacks a defensive position monster. And that def that monster's defense is lower than this card's attack. Use the original values if they're if the other monster is no longer on the field. Gain the li life points equal to the surplus. So I believe what that means is essentially I'll gain life points equal to the life points that they took from my piercing damage, which is pretty bleeding cool. Oh, no, not that. I really wanted to keep that card. I really wanted to keep that card. Right, Doctor Cranium, you're nice to see. Thank you. Hello. You and your gorgeous face. Right. Blaster! Destroy! Okay. Right. Okay. She can't defend now. She can't defend. Is she seriously not going to get her? Wow. Okay. Okay. I don't trust that face down card whatsoever. That face down card is there to destroy my stuff. So in response... I'm playing Teleport. Can't use it yet, obviously, but I will. Right, so she can have cards like Torrential Tribute. She can have cards that destroys my stuff. It's none of those! Yes! Oh, okay, I actually got lucky there. I actually got lucky because she went through, what, a, a quarter of her deck? Did not get a single Terraforming. A card that you use to add a field spell from your deck to your hand. Or the spell of the field spell Future Visions, which when you normal summon a when a player normal summons a monster, it removes it from play and then at the next sort of uh, the uh, the next standby phase of the player that summoned the monster, it comes back onto the field. Negating Psy Station completely. So that's a really bad tip, Konami, Other Ocean and the other guys that worked on this game. That's a really shitty tip. Forty six minutes that took. I don't care. I honestly don't care. So, uh, uh... Oh, and just to add to my suffering, you give me Torrential Tribute as a card. Thank you for it. It's a nice card, but also, screw you. It's a horrible card to play against. And we got new deck avatar of Dark Carly. Um, essentially, what happened is, uh, Carly got shoved out a window... Fell onto ground and died. Certainly not fell into the purple like the dub thing, the dub decided to do. Uh, and was resurrected as Dark Sign and kicked Sayer's ass. That's what happened. So there you go. 
Anyway, Mark of the Monkey! Here we go. We're actually playing as Leo this time. That's interesting. As Carly fell from the Arcadia Movement building, she was absorbed by purple mist and vanished. No, she didn't! She fell onto stone and ground! Look, there was no random purple realm to be there going, Hey, this chick's about to fall. Let's break her fall and turn her evil and kill her. No, just fell on the floor dead. The dub really infuriates me sometimes. It's just like... Eh, what well, people have fallen from high places before. But you can show that, you know. It's not like in the... You know, in the uh, in the Japanese version, you know the original version, there was like any blood, guts, or gore, or broken bones poking out of skin. There was none of that. So why the purple? You purple bastards! I understand sometimes that the dub's weird. Soon afterwards, the Earth began to quake. Carly reappeared as a dark signer. Get out of my building! But I'm here to ask you for a rematch, Sayer. I must be seeing things. Is that you, Carly? But you fell! The Dark Signers are actively recruiting duelists to join their calls. And they chose yours truly. And that's bad news for you. Sayer and Carly began a shadow duel. Yep, they're back. Just saying. And a series of quakes continued to hit the Arcadia Movement Tower. Sayer was defeated by Dark Signer Carly and seemingly fell to his doom from atop Arcadia headquarters. During the battle, Earthbound Immortal Asilopiscu was summoned and began destroying the entire building. Fortunately, Leo, Luna, Bolt, and Tenzin used this opportunity to escape Arcadia headquarters from the giant hummingbird trying to kill them. That's Asilopiscu. It's quite cool, I guess. Luna! How did you guys find me? This is the 8th floor, both... God damn it, hang on a minute. Guess who that was? It was the f***ing postman! <laughs> Bastard! Yeah, it's like 10 to 5. But, okay, fair enough. That's a parcel that's not even for me. Cheers, Posty. Anyway. This is the 8th door boat! I <laughs> knocked it. I like that line, just because of the fact that Bolt must have a really bruised shoulder at this point. I need to break this glass to get to Leo. Leo, you alright? Where's Luna? Is she okay? She's standing right beside you, dude. There you go, yeah. I'm so glad you're safe. I'm not... It's not like I'm helpless without you. So, uh... What am I doing in this room? I don't know, but let's not talk about it right now. Meaning, let's get out of here! Akiza managed to escape the collapsing building with the rest of Yusei's friends, and the Earthbound Immortal vanished along with the Dark Signer. Elsewhere in New Domino City, a newly detained Griger received a surprising rescue. Huh? Who are you? The name is Divac. I know what Goodwin did to you, Griger, to your village. I know you're angry, and I know you still want revenge. I can help you get that revenge. Come with me. Meanwhile, Yusei Fudo and the rest of the signers met with Goodwin to discuss recent events. Let me give you a history lesson. Thousands of years ago, a huge war was fought, where the Crimson Dragon defeated the Army of Shadows. Afraid that the Shadows would one day return to destroy the world, the Crimson Dragon locked them underground. Magic symbols were carved into the earth, trapping their essence for millennia. In time, the Shadows were forgotten, and their prison became a tourist destination known as the Nazca Lines. But the Shadows weren't willing to stay defeated. They wanted revenge, which they are now getting with the help of the Dark Signers. I believe some of you have already experienced the Dark Signers' dangerous monsters firsthand. You mean the Earth- you must mean the Earthbound Immortals. Yes, their strength is staggering, for they contain the very power of the Army of the Shadows. We get it, they're bad! Let's just take him out, mate. Our task goes far beyond beating an enemy. It's a rescue operation for all those poor people who have been corrupted by the powers of darkness. After talking with Goodwin, the Signer team headed to the satellite in order to stop the Dark Signers. 
The Sina team splits up, each set setting out to battle a different Dark Sina, each with their own motivations. The Dark Sina Divac had taken Ancient Fairy Dragon and was keeping it from Luna. In an attempt to find and rescue her Ancient Fairy Dragon, Luna transported to the Spirit World, something in 5Ds that I didn't give a shit about, personally. I usually skip past it. On oh, honest note. While Leo searched for Luna, he came across Divac and was pulled into a duel against the Dark Sina. Who are you? You're not a Sina. What are you doing here? I'm here to duel you. That is if you think you're strong enough to take me on. Is this some kind of joke? Where's the little girl? Why isn't she here? I told her to come. Well, she's busy. You're gonna have to duel me instead, mister. I may not be a Sina, but that doesn't mean I can't rock a deck. I applaud your enthusiasm, but I'm afraid you simply do not have the power to match me, boy. If you insist on being destroyed, so be it. All right, the battle against Divac, the most useless dark signer of them all. Because honestly, he's basically just an episodic villain. While the rest of the dark signers actually have character development, a bit of plot for them, Divac's got none of that. Like, he's... Out of all the Dark Siders, in my personal opinion, he is probably the least rememberable. Anyway, it's time to play as Leo. So, um, hoping on Powerful Tool Dragon, that'd be nice. Versus Divac, the first Dark Sider. Um, I'll go second. I don't know what D. I can't remember what Divac's, D Divac's deck is. I think it's to do with monkeys, if I remember. Because he's got the uh, sign of the monkey. Limiter removal. <laughs> And it's an urgent tuning. That's a pretty decent... Co oh, no. Do you know I now hate terraforming? Why have you got two? I guess it takes them out of your deck, so I guess that's not bad. Closed forests. Oh, God. That looks like a nasty card. All beast-type monsters you control gain 100 attack for each monster in your graveyard. Field spell cards cannot be activated. Field spell cards cannot be activated during the turn this card is destroyed. Ouch, that's a nasty card immediately. Uh, right. So, we've got these lovely Morphtronic monsters here. Oh! What's Power Tool Dragon? He's a level 7! Oh, okay! Okay, so what we can actually do here is we can actually... Yeah, so what we can actually do is we can actually summon... We can actually get Power Tool Dragon in the first turn. So I'm going to play Morphtronic Scopin first up. And I will not activate Limiter Removal, sod that. But I will activate Morphtronic Scoping's ability. So I will special summon uh, a level 4 Morphtronic monster in your hand, but it's destroyed uh, during the end phase. That's fine. I will take Morphtronic Radeon. Then I shall Synchro Summon. No, actually. What if I do Limiter Removal first? That's actually a better idea. No, I, I, yes, yes, I will activate limiter removal. Okay, limiter removal. That's a lot of power right there. That's a lot of power. Right, so let's attack. Yes, it's Moja. Uh, Strong battle set in the graveyard. You can add one level B, level four beast type monster from your graveyard to your hand. Well, that's pretty useless at this point. So Scopin will now attack. Then I'll go into my main phase two. Now they've attacked. Get rid of both of them, because they're going to be destroyed by limiter removal anyway. And summon Power Tool Dragon. That's a better use of my turn than to just play Power Tool Dragon immediately. He's obviously going to be in attack mode. Why not? Right, once per turn, reveal three equip spell cards from your deck. Okay, so we definitely want double tool C and D. We definitely want that. Yes. Uh, Rocket Palder. Snatch Steel? Snatch Steel's a decent card. Snatch Steel I could use. I could certainly use that. Autonomous Action Unit. It's a, a good card to get a monster back, so I could use that definitely on Power Tool Dragon. Um, do I change about position and wins? Uh, it's, it's not bad as well, actually. But I think we're going to go for power here. So I'm going to take Double Tool C&D. Uh, Rocket Pilder. And double tool C and D. And I'll draw Rocket Pilder. When the equipped monster is attacking, it cannot be destroyed by battle at the end of the damage step for the equipped monster 
uh, attacked. Uh, the attack target loses attack equal to the attack of the equipped monster until the end phase. That's pretty good. So we'll actually activate Rocket Pilder onto Power Tool Dragon. Uh, because it will randomly add onto my hand and I shuffle my deck. If this card would be destroyed while equipped with an equipped spell card, you can send one of those cards to the graveyard instead. So that's really good. That is really good. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Good start altogether. Okay, you got your third terraforming. Well done. Congratulations to you, good sir, Bivak. Right. Good start. Good start. We've got Power Tool Dragon. We've got Megamorph as well. It's not useful now because we have the life points. Right. Snatch Steel is pretty nice here. Double Tool C&D is pretty good as well. So we're going to take both of those. What are we going to get? 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 What card are we going to get for this? Are we going to get Double Tool C&D? Yes, we are! Nice. Uh, equip only to a Power Tool Dragon or a level 4 low uh, or higher Mortronic monster you control. While equipped during your turn, uh, it gains 1,000 attack points. If it attacks any effects of the attack target that activate or apply on the field are negated during the battle phase. During your opponent's turn, your opponent cannot select a monster other than the equipped monster as an attack target. An opponent... Uh, monster that battles the equipped monster is destroyed at the end of the damage step. That is a really good card for Power Tool Dragon. Right. Okay, so we got Selfon here, who's actually pretty good. Uh, it's attack abilities. Roll a six sided dice. Reveal cards from the top of your deck equal to the roll, especially from one level four low Morph Strike monster from among them. Ignoring the summoning conditions. Shuffle the rest back into your deck. And then we've got Morphtronic Remoten. Uh, you can target one Morphtronic monster in your graveyard. Banish that target and add one Morphtronic monster at the same level from your deck to your hand. I think I'm actually going to take... I want to take self on here. Yeah, I'm going to take self on. It's safe as long as Power Tool Dragon's on the field. I will activate self on's ability. What dice roll am I going to get? A one. It's a Scopin! Well, that works for me. I get to draw Scopin and summon it. Go, Scopin. Yes. While in attack position, special summon a level uh, 4 Morph Trait Monster from your hand. Destroy it. Okay, so yeah, that's fine. But we don't have level 4 at the moment, which is a bit of a shame. Right, Power Tool Dragon. It's up to you. Destroy another Moja. Double Tool C&D crushes it. And Rocket Pill. Yeah, so it essentially it negates their abilities. That's pretty good. So we're just going to get a little chip damage here from Selfon. Very nice. And he can't kill those things. He's got to get rid of Power Tool Dragon first. And it's got two... It's, it's got two spell cards on him. So he's going to need to destroy it three times at the moment for it to be defeated. Autonomous Action Unit. Pretty good. Pay, pay, pay 1,500 life points. Uh, special summon a monster from your, uh, from your deck. Uh, from your graveyard. For your opponent's graveyard, actually, I'm going to take your Moja. Screw you. That's going to help. <laughs> Screw you, Moja. Right. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to play self uh, self on first, obviously. It's a three. <clears throat> okay, so we get a level one. That's all right. I kind of would like... oh swords. That's not useful for the moment. And a junk box. Okay, so we have one card we can use there, which is more, which is another morph trying self on. Well, look at that! It's another self on. Da da! It's a second self on. Okay. Uh, so I got six. So I need one more. I need this Moja to die immediately. Right. So I can activate Power Tool Dragon's ability definitely. What I want now? Okay. Double Tool C and D. Snatch Steel's pretty useful here as. Yeah, might as well. Might as well uh, get those ones. Why not? Right. Uh, I think we're doing pretty well so far, I'd say. I think this has been a pretty fun duel so far. What am I going to get? I'm going to get another double tool c and It's pretty nice. I'll take it. I'm not playing Megamorph because that'd be dumb. Yep, it's got to go on the power tool, Dragon. <laughs> now it's got 4,300. Lovely. Right. Power tool, Dragon. Kick its ass. Phantom, Phantom King Hydrite, that guy, he's dead. Uh, if the, if you use this card, you control for a Synchro Summon, uh, you can treat it as a non-Tuna monster. That's pretty useful, actually. Shame he doesn't have one, though. 
Call of the Haunted. Okay. You're bringing back a monster. That's actually useful for me. No, I don't want to get rid of Selphon. But I will get rid of this Moja. I don't want that Moja. There you go. Autonomous action unit was useless to me. Right. Uh, main phase two. Right. My second Selphon. I need a level two here. Or a... Oh, God. That's a level four. That's been boxing. That's been boxing. That's perfect. That is perfect. Because I can use these two to get a second power tool dragon on the field. Screw yourself, Divac. Here's a second one for you. You had difficulty trying to get rid of my first. There you go. My second power tool dragon. Ability activate. Break draw. I might as well just take all these. Break. There you go. That's the last ability of this card. Right. I wouldn't actually mind a snatch steal. That'd be quite nice. Okay, so we got Morphtronic Repair Unit. Send one Morphtronic monster from your hand to the graveyard, and then select one monster in your graveyard. Uh, special summon the uh, selected monster equipped with this card. The equipped monster cannot change battle position, and when this card is removed from the field, destroy the equipped monster. Pretty useful. Definitely going to use it. I will get rid of Remoten, because it's pretty useless at this point. Who do I want to bring in? Do I want to bring in a Scope? No, Scopin's useless. Radeon? Radeon's really good. So I will bring back Morphtronic Radeon. This is... I've got a full field right now. And look at the power I've got. Look at this power. Cell phones are actually powerful now. <laughs> Devac, you're screwed, mate. There is nothing... I don't believe there's anything you can do. Unless you have magic and trap card removal. You're done. You're done. You are absolutely done. That's a junk box. It's not very useful. Right, let's get the attacks. You put it in defense mode? You are a silly boy. Divac, you are a silly boy. Power tool dragon attacks. Dark resonator. Why have you got dark resonator for? Well, it's dead now. Power tool dragon for the win. Wow! That was demolition right there. That is how good Leo's deck can be. It's pretty badass. But yeah... If your opponent has, like, any form of magical trap card removal, that's its weakness. Luna returned from the spirit world and regained Ancient Fairy Dragon. With Leo and Luna's combined power, they were able to defeat Divac. No, it was Leo's power tool dragons. Two of them! Well, to be honest, one was enough to beat Divac. This is a total happy ending moment. Except this isn't the ending. Leo, you were really great! I can do that, because I feel like I'm getting a cold coming. You cry, baby. Alright, so, yes. We we didn't even get uh, his Earthbound Immortal Kusalu at all. Yeah, so he's supposed to have a monkey deck, by the way. Uh, he's got a shit deck. <laughs> or it just can't beat Power Tool Dragon. But anyway, guys, I'm going to go for a break here. But the next episode, let's play Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Doors. Just like to say that the first half of this episode was rubbish. I hated it. Second half was a lot of fun. And it's now time for a whale of a ride. It looks like Griger, and it looks like Crow. Crow versus Griger? <laughs> Interesting. I'll see you then.